How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Forever Arsenal podcast. It does feel like it's been a little while and it has been a little while in this format with Jordan in the building. Jordan? Can I just say, just, first of all, it's so good to see you guys back. I'm really, really, really glad to see you all back. Um, Down to the negatives, man. We know well, no, 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 no negatives, no negatives. I just wanted to say that because we are back, I noticed there was only one Forever Arsenal you did in the States. And the talk on the streets here, I'm just saying, I didn't say this, but the talk on the streets in, in London, in West London, where I am now, is that it couldn't really work without me involved. They were just saying this. They were like, they can't do a pod without J, the, the JJB stuff. So I'm just saying, <laughs> that's, that's not me saying it. The streets are saying, without a man like JJB, you can't do the pod. So I just wanted to flag that because there's a lot of talk on the streets, Turkish. A lot of I'm talk. not going to lie, the, the streets said that to me too. That's why we didn't do one. <laughs> That's what I'm I hearing streets of West London and James is on those same streets. I don't know what streets we're talking about here, but... <laughs> I don't know what... uh, Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace. <laughs> you know, the walk Victoria to the park. And... That street, yeah. Yeah, 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 the... yeah. A couple streets there, yeah. Well, I don't know if anyone checked the comment section, but the, the show in the US did pretty well, Jordan. I don't know. Did, nah, did not... That's not yeah. what I'm hearing. That's not what I'm hearing. Oh, that's, that's not what I'm hearing, but um, it, b before you kick off, it was a, I enjoyed all your content, all the content from you guys was just was just honestly, it was really top notch, real good insight, real good BTS. You lot killed Julian, which I loved. Um, <laughs> um, getting access to the games, the players, all of that stuff, man. You guys on a, on a serious thing, you guys, the, the, the elevation of the platform and what you guys did and how you conduct yourself out there. <clears throat> The tone was right. Just like when it was time to kind of do some proper, proper chat, we got that from you guys. We're time to fool around, have a, have a laugh. We've got some madness in the kitchen and all that kind of rubbish as well, which was fun as well. So, no, nah, I was, I really wanted to be there. And I was, but the, the, the content, Robbie, Cecil, all of you guys, big up, big up, man. Yeah. Loved it. Loved yeah. it. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. We did miss you. Oh. I'm no, coming next year. Curtis was... Let, let's Jordan, 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 Jordan. James didn't mention, 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 mention your name. Not, mention not, one. not once in that whole trip. Did I mention my mum's name? I missed her. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, he's got a point there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not listening to you. on cloud nine since we got to it. It was great. Curtis was great. The trip was great. Would have been great to have you there too, Jordan. But who, who's better? It could all James, be true. Who's, but who's better? James or no, Jordan or Curtis? Who's a better contributor? So I think we should probably talk about the games. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not a <laughs> 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 on that note, well, to be honest, the, the, the note has already started. Obviously, we've got some news about David Rea, um, Arsenal interested. We'll move on to that later in the show. Arsene Wenger's statue has been unveiled since we've got back from the US tour and since the last time I've done the podcast together. We're going to touch in on that. And Thomas Partey's staying, which you know came out a couple of weeks ago, but the last time we all talked as um, a quartet, his um, Arsenal career was supposedly coming to an end. So that's something we'll also touch on. But Jordan set the tone, the US tour. You all seen the content. Appreciate the love, Jordan. Um, I hope everyone did enjoy that. But more on the games now, Jordan. Me, James and Lee, we, we were out there. Um, so we was talking all the time before and after games. We haven't really got a chance to hear from you and what you thought about the performances, the results, mm. the debuts along the way. Um, <coughs> what did you... First question is, what did you learn from the pre-season US tour? Um, I don't think I learned much, but that's not necessarily a negative. Um, the, the games are the games. First of all, I'm one of those people that thinks that pre-season does matter. I don't, I don't say it doesn't matter when you lose and then it does matter when you win. I think pre-season pre does matter. <clears throat> Results less so, Turkish. I don't really, unless you're getting smashed 6 0 in every preseason game, I don't really care if Arsenal lose in preseason uh, pre uh, matches. I think it's more about I'm looking more for A, sharpness and fitness, and B, I'm looking to see how does my manager want to play this season. And in a really, really backwards way, Turkish, I think it's actually better if you do make mistakes on preseason tours, because that says to me that the guy manager's trying new things. 
He's working out what doesn't work, what combinations are not good combinations, what formations are not good formations. So if the preseason goes perfectly well, granted last year, I think we probably had as close to a perfect preseason we probably could have had. So I'm going to contradict myself here slightly, but I think if your preseason is going, is going too well, that's a little bit, I don't say alarming, but it's, it, preseason shouldn't be going well. Your preseason should be where you make errors, you make mistakes, you try things, you try people. And some of the games I thought we were poor, but that's okay because I'm trusting Arteta is trying things and trying combinations. And when you try things, um, new players coming in, then things are going to go wrong. So I'm, I, I don't think it was a great preseason in terms of great performances or great results. In of itself, that for me is not a negative. So overall, not great, but I'm okay with that. <clears throat> well, you're basically saying it, it, the results don't matter, but what matters is the the, the chemistry the mm. and the match fitness. Mm. That's what you're looking at more. Because yeah, I, I actually agree with you as much as we had a great preseason last season and it led into one of our best seasons in however many years, that doesn't necessarily always correlate. There's proof that the opposite is true as well. Um so you are right. I, I can't lie. The Man United game was demoralising, to say the least. And I think when you look at Arteta holding the players back, all the players back, and giving them an extra, I don't know how long it was, 30 minutes or so on the pitch, warming down, extra training session, because it was a lacklustre performance. I think it shows Arteta really does, you know, care about pre-season and the importance <coughs> of it, um, which is, is a welcome change. I mean, I, I agree with Jordan. I think it is important in some aspects, not so important in, in, in others. Lee, James, I mean, what, what did you learn, if anything, from the tour? Hmm. Um, yeah, a lot of what Jordan said. Uh, yeah, the combinations, how he intends to use Timber, quite a lot of different ways, I think. Um, Havertz is definitely here to be a midfielder. But I think almost the people who said he was here to be a forward and the people who said he was here to be a midfielder, I think they can both kind of say they're right in a way because while his kind of starting position is in midfield, Every, every opportunity, every attack, he's in the box. He's there to be on the end of things as well, which I thought was quite interesting. I thought the Barcelona game gave me a lot of excitement. I, I wasn't too demoralised after Man United. I know it sounds silly. I just thought the first 20 minutes of the United game, I thought we looked really bright and could have had a couple of goals. Um, we didn't get them. And then after we conceded, we struggled to sort of get into any sort of rhythm. Um, but the Barcelona game, I thought we were really good. And yes, you apply the context of, you know, they had the illness, didn't they? So they missed a, a preseason game and, and they were slightly behind in preseason. They had a slightly rotate eleven. All that context is important. But if that's what we're facing, then and they've still got players with Barcelona's quality, then I expect us to do what we did, which is smash them. Five three really flattered them. I think on another day it could have been a six two or a seven for us. Genuinely, when you when you look at the amount of shots we had cleared off the line, headers from corners, the penalty missed. There, there were so many other opportunities where Arsenal really should have scored. And I think if you're going to take all that context into account when talking about kind of what Barcelona are missing going to that game while we can't read too much into it. And at the very least, you want to see Arsenal slapping them up, which I thought they did. Um, but then the other games, yeah, there wasn't too much to get particularly excited about. Um, but yeah, I, I think if we if we build on that and we beat Monaco, then that's two games with some good momentum leading into the Community Shield, which I really want us to win. Um, so I, I'm, I'm encouraged by the tour. Um, I, I think the, the big learning, even though we knew it, you just realised out there how big this squad was. When you saw the 11 that ended games compared to the 11 that started, it would almost be difficult to know which 11 was the better one. And it was littered with great players. Rice was out, so Partey started against Barcelona. I mean, what a privilege that is, right? To be able to alternate between those two. And I still like Jorginho. So there's, there's real depth um, and there will be some outgoings, but I think largely we're going to have a very strong squad for all of next year. Yeah, for me, I'm going to be really honest. I'm I'm not as excited about the season this season as I was last after watching the the, the preseason tour last season. I, I was more than excited with what I see, like you know, like Saliba coming in, Jesus and and Shinchenko. I was really like excited going into the season, but <clears throat> I think expectations. I think Turkey said this when we was away are different now, so maybe that has something to do with it. Actually, talking to my mate, Mark, uh, this morning, um, and he, he watched the games over, over here, so you get a different perspective. And uh, I'm more right to believe that Man United haven't won a game since then. You know what I mean? Lost every every game since since they beat us. 
And, and he came out of a good point. He said, you know what? We was disappointed we lost that game. It was two mistakes, but neither team played that well. He said, like, you know, Man, you know, Man United weren't that great that day. And you don't really look at it like that because you're just sort of concentrating on Arsenal. He said, you know, I mean, both teams weren't great on that day and weren't a great game. Um, and, you know, I echo that. It wasn't a great game, was it? We didn't. I don't know if it was a heat or whether they were working hard in training or whatever, but it didn't. But I think that going into the game in Los Angeles, we needed that. A, 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 as fans, just a little bit of a boost to just to say, look, you know, a little confidence boost going into that game. And, and we got it. I think Barcelona were a far better team than Man United on the day. I think, you know, they... They opened us up on on occasions with good football where I felt that it was mistakes that cost us against Man United. I thought they opened us up. We opened them up. It was a really, really enjoyable game. You know, chalk and cheese when you look at the games where everybody in Los Angeles got entertainment for their money. Where I think everybody was a little bit disappointed. I, even speaking to Man United fans after the game was saying it wasn't a great game, was it? Like, you know, so from, from that point of view there. And I, I, ju I just think that, you know, I do think pre-season is important. I really do. I've always said that. It's not so much the results, but performances. You know what I mean? I, I would have, if have lost that game 3-2 or 4-3 against Barcelona, I wouldn't have been as disappointed because I'd seen things in that game that I liked. Party, for instance, was outstanding when he came. I, I'm going to say it now. People have really been doubting Havertz over the, like, uh, this tour. I think... That 45 minutes was fantastic. I really enjoyed watching him play. Um, disappointed he didn't come out for the second half. I, I don't know why that wasn't, because I, I think that I felt he was thrown under the bus a little bit by doing that silly little um, skills thing, because if uh, if he does well in it, no one would say anything. If he does it bad in it, everybody was going to jump on him. And he was just really playing really well. I'd like to have seen him have another 10, 15 minutes in the second half. But... I was encouraged with what I've seen. You know, Timber's been a fantastic watching him. On it. He's been the one, you know, the shining light. You know, if you be really honest, Declan Rice hasn't really done anything on the tour at the moment. Baker's fitting in and, and he's had a slight injury. But Timber's come in and, and been really exciting and gives us options. Oh, I didn't even know that we had, like, you know, certainly like from the left back position, I think that maybe that's where we're going to go now for the next couple of, uh, I think that's going to be our back four going into the season because, I, uh, you know, Shinchenko hasn't played a minute in this tournament. And I'm, I'm seeing today on the TV that he's playing in the, in the uh, charity game on the Saturday before the Sunday. You know what I mean? I don't really know what's going on there, whether he's going to be even involved in it on Wednesday or the, or the Community Shield, you know what I mean? I'd imagine that if he's going to be playing on that on Saturday, he's going to be playing some sort of part on Wednesday. But uh, I, I was really, really impressed with Timber. I, I think that he's, he's um, surprised me. I'm going to say, do you know, like last season, you had Saliba, how good he was and all that. Like, you know, I don't really know too much about Timber, but but I've been really encouraged what I've seen of him. So, all in all, I think it's a, a, a decent, decent tour. Um, but I'm, I'm actually look, looking forward to these next two games a lot more as far as getting to see what sort of team we're going to be picking and playing. I think, you know, sometimes you're giving players minutes. I think these next two games, um, Community Shield, is it a friendly or not? That's another discussion for another time. But I, I'm really looking forward to these two games because I think this is where we're going to get near as damn it to the team that's going to start against Forest. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. Can I ask you all, all, all two questions? The first question is, because Lee mentions that the United game, a lot of the United fans and Arsenal fans didn't think it was a particularly great game. Do you think that these clubs, when they go on these tours, their focus should be more on entertaining, considering they've got a huge fan base over there that want to see their teams play? And, you know, they're paying these, you guys pay probably decent money to watch those games. And there's, there's, a, there's a responsibility to show some of the stars and play, you know, entertaining football versus actually we're here to kind of get ready for the first game of the season. And that might mean some games are a bit tactically crap. That might mean there might be some mistakes. Where do you guys feel the dial kind of lands on mm. the responsibility of football clubs when they go to America, Australia, you know, the Far East, that sort of thing? It's to prep. It's to prep and do what you've got to do to be ready for the season. And and I, I get what you're saying, you know. I think there's to a degree a response, but I think there are two things that go hand in hand. I don't think you should be sort of taking out a load of uh, 
younger or reserve players and just playing them and what you know because I think these fans want to see the the best players or whatever but at the same time I think that benefits the team which is prepping and getting ready for the new season I just think the amount of scrutiny footballers and football managers are under all that if you've got time together to have friendlies and prep for the new season use it exactly the way you need to use it uh, so no I don't think it's a responsibility to entertain or anything like that I think they've got to get what they can out of that game um to be brutally honest. I, I agree with James here, but then don't be charging $200, $300 for a ticket. You know what I mean? I, I, I is do it, think is that, that what it was? Yeah, it, it's absolutely wow. ridiculous. Like $200 for, for those games. Um, and sometimes even more, depending where you were sitting. Now, that's more than a Premier League game. And I, I, I feel that was brutal for the for the american fans you know what i mean it is spend, extortionate it is yeah to be spending that sort of money and then getting a performance like that from both teams against uh, in the man united arsenal game I, I i felt that the american fans in new york were disappointed at the standard of the game for what they've actually paid for that's the sort of feeling that i was getting for it certainly not for the for the um Barcelona game because it was entertaining. You can turn around and say that that was worth probably the money, but um, I, I do agree. I think you know it is prep and it is that sort of thing. But you know, even the MLS game was two hundred dollars for a, for a team that's a made up team, and also um, players that you know are not going to be actually playing for Arsenal. Were, uh, come the, come the the kickoff were playing in that game and spending a lot, a lot, you know, the American fans. So, so we're spending a, a lot of money on those those games. And, and you, you know, you go into those stadiums as well and the prices for drinks and, and food and all that, you know, is really bad, like, you know, for, 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 the, for, the, for the fans. So, you know, I do think that you've got to think of fans as well, like, you know, whether they're, they're, they're the American fans over there. And I felt for them. I did feel for them, like, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, from from that point of view, I, I did think it was wrong. You know, what I mean, like it's, they're charging more money to watch those games in the Premier League game. Yeah, I think I, I think it's it's more they have to reduce the price of the tickets and availability more than make the matches more entertainment based and preparation for the season. I, I think that's where it lies. I like the skills challenge. I think that's something I'd like to see every year. If I'm honest with you, I, I was a fan of that. Um, I think that's where the entertainment side comes from, and that was actually pretty cheap. I think that was twenty twenty five dollars. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So, um, that that was all right, but in terms of the games, I'm with Lee and James. Prep is most important, and it's probably most important for our three new signings as well. Lee mentioned all three, gave his opinions on all three. Let's start with the one we had going into the the, the preseason tour, wrapped up um, a few weeks prior. Havertz, who comes out of it with two goals in three games. In my opinion, not much to be said about his performances. I know I've seen, you know, different reports and, and suggestions and opinions that he had a good half here and he played well in this pocket of 20 minutes there. I'm yet to see it, but he scored two goals in three games. If he can bring anything close to that um, productivity into a 38-game season, I predicted he'd get five goals, five assists. If he can get us 10 goals, if he can get us 10 goals then I'm happy from what the output in that position. So as much as I don't understand it positionally and what he's going to bring to the build-up and so on, I'd get it if he's getting at the end of things. Because sometimes with Xhaka, he'd be in the final third last season and he'd look like a fish out of water. That's where I'd expect Havertz to be completely different. When he picks up in the final third, more proficient in front of goal or to lay it off to, to a teammate. So... I had low expectations initially. I think my expectations have risen since watching Hazard more because of the goals and the output than the performances. But what do you lot think? Havertz, first and foremost. I was impressed with him against Barcelona, which was a good side, I have to say. Like, you know, I'm with you on this. I don't, I, don't, I think we're all on this now. If you was to say, right, come the game against Forest, what's your midfield three going to be? I think we're all going to say, Parte, Rice, and and Ulegaard, you know what I mean. But so I don't really see where he's going to fit in on on you know sixty five million pound. But what I see of him when he played on on the game against Barcelona, if say for instance Party can't play, Rice goes into that position and 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 Havertz comes in and 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 if if Rice is out, 
Havertz comes in. So it's it's a good quality uh, replacement to come in. And, and I, you know, the dip isn't going to be so bad. My real big concern I, I, was was his defensive qualities. I think, you know, like his couple of goals, I think he took really well. By the way, the, the first goal he took well after that skills challenge, you know, was very, very impressive. And I just felt his defensive side might be a little bit... But I was quite impressed with his defensive side against uh, Barcelona. I like the way he, he got back. Uh, I also like the way that, you know, if if um, he was beaten and he, he'd make a the old tactical foul and everything like that. I, I, I have to say, I'm more impressed with him after the game against Barcelona than I have been before. And, and I'm, I, I'm going to back him. I'm going to back him and say that he's going to be... He's going to be a good player for us. Yeah, I'd say um, he was unimpressive against the All-Stars and Man United. Not even just like he was fine. I thought he was just actually pretty ineffective and I wanted to see more. I was sort of thinking, come on, you know, you're six foot four, you're quick, mm. you know, you're supposedly strong, you're good on the ball, you've got all these attributes to show us something. We saw very little of it. Um, but then I actually thought he was... Very impressive against Barcelona. Like I, th- I think he went up quite a few levels in that game. Um, and actually, what I started to see as well was the way Arteta can get the best out of him and multiple other players at the same time. The way Havertz was able to move up front and then Jesus would drift left and then Trossard was coming into the pockets to get the ball. And I thought it's, it's quite unique the way you know, very versatile players were alternating in different positions and covering each other. And it gave us a flexibility whilst maintaining the structure. Um, He gets in the box with every attack. He's there at the back post. And that's, you know, it's no coincidence. He scored his two goals from there and he scored against Man United from a similar position. So look, still a lot to learn about Kai Havertz. Um, Does he make my best Arsenal 11 right now? No, I agree. Rice, I would still go into next season doing what we did last season, but asking Rice to do what Xhaka did. Um, but I'm definitely seeing a lot more of what Arteta has planned for him. Um, and just hopefully it works out. that There were just nice moments of confidence against Barcelona where there wasn't a pass on, so he decided to just drive through midfield. And I liked seeing that. There was one moment where he had the ball out on the left, there was no pass on, so he knocked it around the fullback and then you know out, outpaced him the other way. I like seeing these little things because they show... They show confidence, but also they show a uh, what's the word I, I used the other day? Um, he's imposing himself. He's going. I'm, I'm going to show you what I can do. I'm going to drive. I'm going to show my ability on the ball. There was one little bit of really good football in the middle of the area, and he just one touch switched it to Saka, and it was very aware. It was very sharp, and I liked seeing all that against Barcelona. Those 45 minutes it was good to see. I hope we see more of it against Monaco. And then let's see what he goes with against Man City. Because what I still believe is that you can't have Partey and Rice in the squad and really believe you can leave both of them out, especially when they can technically play together. So, yeah, more questions than answers still. But I I like some of the answers against Barca. I've just worked it out. I've just worked out the player that Kai Havertz is probably most comparable to. And not in terms of ability, but I've just worked it out. Can Have I guess? Cook. Go, go. Are you, you might, you guys might think I'm crazy, but just that, are you thinking Thomas Muller? No. Okay. I was, I was thinking more Kaka. Okay. They're both, they're both, they're both crazy, I'll be honest. No, no, but let, 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 me, let, me, let me go forward. So Kaka was probably slightly more of an out and out 10. I think Kai Havertz kind of more drifts into the 10 role, but both quite tall and languid, but deceptively quite quick. Havertz isn't slow, technically quite proficient. I, I I don't know. I just I just think I think Arteta thinks that Kaka is the mold of player that Havertz could become. That's what I think. Uh, that uh, that's it. Just come to me. Just thinking, who can I compare Havertz? I'm not saying he's as good as Kaka. Kaka for me is one of the best players of all time, in my opinion. There's no player in world football that was more effective in attack without touching the ball. Kaka was brilliant at creating space without touching the ball, and he was a genius at that. I'm not. I'm not comparing him to. I'm just saying the type of player I can see similar similar characteristics. That if he's coached properly, that's the sort of player I could see him moulding into. But anyway, so so can I jump on that quick, John? Because because that reasoning is why I said Thomas Muller. It wasn't my idea. Someone actually mentioned it on Twitter, and I agreed. I, Thomas Muller for years at Bayern has been a world-class player 
and has been up there, you know, for stats and he's fit into pretty much all their best sides. And yet I couldn't tell you what his best position is or what his best attribute. And there's a word, and I believe it comes from German football, and the word is Raumdeuter, which I think means space invader. It's mm-hmm. essentially a player that is really good at knowing where to mm-hmm. be and how to manipulate a game without touching the ball. Mm-hmm. And I was watching Havertz and thinking, Partey is he's looking brilliant on the ball here. Erdegaard actually had a poor game, but again, very silky on the ball. And Havertz actually showed some neatness and some tidiness, as I just mentioned. But the best thing was he was always kind of in the right spot. Mm-hmm. He was always in the right place. And look, maybe I'm doing a lot of mental gymnastics here to try and really understand Havertz. And maybe I am, and I'll hold my hands up to that because I'm still not convinced. But what you're just saying there about manipulating a game through movement, I was kind of seeing a little bit more of that. The way he played that ball in behind to Jesus, but he was out on the left wing. Really should be thinking, why are you on the left wing? But actually, mm-hmm. he's picked a pocket mm-hmm. to create a move. Mm-hmm. I hope he becomes that kind of player because that can be very effective for us. Um, but I, I will also say, he's no Thomas Muller. <laughs> before everyone does that Clip, clips this up <laughs> but um i thought that was a very interesting thing you said jordan and, I, yeah, I, 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 I think good. arsenal fans if, if arsenal fans are expecting um kai havertz to beat three four players and bang it top bins if they're expecting him to blast past players i think he's quicker than we think but he's not he's not he's not saka he's not he's not rapid um you know, you, then, you guys just described kaka there what do you mean Running past players and blasting in the back of the net. No, no, look, Kaka for me is is, his 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 main skill wasn't necessarily beating players. He could beat players, but you 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 didn't you can't find that many goals of Kaka doing a hazard or doing an Henri and beating three four players and do you know the the, the point I'm making is that I don't think that's expectation we should have for Havertz. I think expectation for Havertz this season and like James, maybe I'm trying to justify the signing. Maybe I'm trying to tell myself a reason. But when I look at him, because I think it's very easy and very lazy just to say, oh, Kai Havertz at Chelsea was crap. There's there's nothing obvious that he does that's great. But I think don't underestimate the power of knowing where to be on the pitch at the right time. Sometimes goals are scored and you're not even involved. But it's the guy that wasn't involved that actually is the reason. I'm not trying to be too intellectual about this either. But I'm just saying this season, don't judge Kai Havertz on his goals or assists. Judge him on his overall impact on on, on attacks. But but what, what, what what I'll say about him, though, is that I think he's got to do better. My only concern about Kai Havertz, my one concern is intensity. That is my only concern this season. Can he match Arteta's intensity? I think what's really key and why we started the season very well last season, and I think bar towards the end, and even at the end, I think we got it back, was every single game you had 11 players at it. It wasn't about technical ability. It wasn't about who can who can score. It was just that every single player was at it. And my only concern about Kai Havertz in the Chelsea shirt wasn't, is he technically good enough? Can he score a goal? It was, it doesn't look like he's on it. He looks like you, you can you can you can be in a poor team but still be on it, and that was my only concern about Kai Havertz. And Arteta's not going to have it. So for him to spend at least seventy million on Kai Havertz, he must think that he can get him get him at it. But overall, I don't think he had a great preseason. But like I said before, I'm not going to judge him too harshly on that. that. That's the fear. That's the fear. That the one fear that I've got about Kai Havertz, and it's not is he's. He looks like he can be lazy and all that, like, you know, his body language and all that, like, no, I don't think, and he it, it, it didn't show that in the game against Barcelona, but I do think that he's got that in his locker, like, where people think, oh, he's, oh, look at him, he's a bit like Ozil, he's a bit lazy, like, you know, I, I hope that that body language can be taken out of him, like, because I didn't see it against Barcelona, but it was certainly evident against uh, Manchester United, like, you know, um, and, and, and you're right, Jordan, I, Arteta doesn't tolerate that. So, you know, um, for him to spend £65 million on him, you know, uh, I, I don't think that he's, um, he's going to... Uh, he, he feels that that's a problem. Like, you know, I, I was encouraged by, by by his work rate off the ball when we didn't have the ball against Barcelona. That's the first time that I've I'd, I actually seen it and I thought, yeah. And do you know what? Because he's sixty-five million pound, and because everybody's turning around and saying, "Oh, you know, like a lot of people are going, oh, this is the one that's going to make Arteta foul and everything." I'm desperate for him to do well, so I'm looking for every crumb of 
uh, good stuff that he does. At this moment in time, I am. So every time he does something good, I'm gonna I'm I'm pleased for it. Like I was pleased with his 45 minutes. I wasn't against uh, Man United, if I'll be honest. Took the goal as a comfort in the first game. Listen, the jury's out on him. We all know that, like, you know, I, mean, I think he's got a lot to prove, but I, 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 there's ability there. I, I see a play there. I really do like oh, okay. it. Can I, oh, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. Just, just quick, I want to just say, find this, but I find it interesting that Arteta spoke about, I think, a, in a press conference, a journalist mentioned um, his physicality versus um, Granit Xhaka's um, physicality. So I can say his name now, he's gone. I can say his name's fine. Um, and and I, I found that kind of observation interesting because although Kai Havertz is six foot two, six foot three? Six four, apparently. Six mm. four, wow. Someone said that, yeah. I don't know how true that is. He's definitely six foot two at least, maybe six foot three. For someone that's quite tall, I don't think he's that physical. But, that, but that's okay. But I think that it's interesting. If you look at our team now, we actually have in terms of height, we have quite a big team now. When you think about Declan Rice, you think about William Saliba, when you think about Gabriel, um, you know, you put um, Kai Havertz in there as well. There's three or four players in there that are, that, that are six foot two plus. Do you know what I mean? But but just because you're tall, that doesn't mean you're necessarily physical. Per Mertesacker was probably the least physical yeah. person I've seen in my entire life. So we mustn't get size and, and height confused yeah. with physicality. Yeah, yeah, I agree. James, did you want to say something? Or? Yeah, just what Lee was saying. And we've actually all said it, I think, actually, which is that we're trying to understand because we're Arsenal fans. We want this to work for Arteta and he spent a lot of money. We want it to work for Kai and all that. I also think I'll just go one further, which is that also I think as football fans, I really want to know why so many fans who watch it the way we do aren't convinced by this player. But Mikel Arteta, who is out on the training ground and has a scouting team and Thomas Tuchel and Graham Potter and whether it's Hansi Flick, Joe Manager, whoever it might be, why they all did play him and they all did want him. And, you know, Granit Xhaka is the same and there's been other players that, you know, Granit Xhaka, whether it was Wenger, Emery, Arteta, you know, by the time Arteta started playing him regularly, I started to think there must be something I'm missing because why does everyone... And then eventually we all saw it. So I think that's part of it as well. I think there's this intrigue from us as fans, which is the the really important guys who make the decisions are backing Kai Havertz. So I want to see why they are doing that. I want to be able to see it through their eyes. Um, and I think I think we're getting a little bit closer. <laughs> I think. Give us time, guys. We're, we're, we're working on it. The games, the games he picks them in. I don't know. It must be over now. The games that Arteta picks Kai Havertz in will be interesting to see. So I think more than any other player in our squad. He probably needs to be picked for very specific games because there'll be some games if he's picked in the wrong game, he will look horrendous. He will look horrendous. But if Arteta picks him in the right game, he's a match winner. Yeah, but I, I, I do want to move on. But are you saying they don't pick him in the big games? Not necessarily big games, but I think a certain type of team we will be playing. It could be a, it could be a Luton, it could be a Man United, it could be any team. But there's certain types of games we will, we will play where the opposition have a certain profile of player or certain tactics that his style of play will and won't be um, appropriate. But I think more so than any other player. I think there's some players on our team you can pick against pretty much anybody because their their tools can are, fr- are pretty much interchangeable. Whereas he's got a very specific um, set of, of of characteristics that I think you need to play against in specific games. Well, I think all three of you have mentioned, or Jordan and Lee in particular, lack of intensity, maybe the look of a lazy player, and similarities to Ozu or comparisons to Ozu in that sense, but. I think if you take a step back and you look at the business so far in the window and the three players that have come in, it's three cogs that I think are all aligned. I think when you look at the intensity of Declan Rice in comparison to the midfielders we have, you know, it's levelled up. When you look at Timber as well in the in the in the games I've seen him in for Arsenal, I mean, he looks very aggressive. He looks very. Um, he, he's got a lot of intensity in his play. He covers that midfield position well as well. He finds himself in the attacking third where I thought he's gonna. He's going to protect Havertz a bit more than that from that position. So I think as much as Havertz does lack what you might call intensity and he does look like a player that's not up for the battle when push comes to shove, I think Declan Rice and Tim Barra. So it'll be interesting to see 
firstly, if Timber slots straight in, obviously with Zinchenko out, you know, with injury and whatnot, and Timber being able to play there, we'll see about that. And and Declan Rice, all, all the rumours and, and talk is he's coming in to play the sixth position. What does that mean for Thomas Partey? Um, maybe we talk about that later when we talk about Partey staying. But Declan Rice and Timber, what did you make of there? You might as well couple them up because on Rice, I don't think there's much to be said or, or, or had from his performances. I'll go first and go quick. Um, yeah, I've not seen enough from Rice so far to kind of really have a judgment. I think that's really fair. But what I'm interested to see, I wonder if it takes Declan Rice a year to integrate into what Arteta wants to do, akin to Grealish under Pep Guardiola. I wonder if it te- if we see the best Declan Rice the following season. Just, I'm just wondering. Just wondering if, because the level up from West Ham to Arsenal, not only in terms of quality, but in terms of, I don't want to do David Moyes down here, but I imagine his technical and tactical abilities of what he wants from his players on the, on the, on the pitch won't be as complex as someone like Mikel Arteta. I wonder if it might take him a year, a whole season, before we get to see the Declan Rice that I think we want to see. But we'll see, we'll see. But I, I'm not seeing enough for him to know whether... It's a fair point. I don't know if I've got the patience to wait a year. <laughs> But it's a fair point. I, I think maybe you'll see the best of Declan Rice after a year, but that doesn't absolve him of his duties in his first. Agree, agree, I agree, I agree. James uh, D, um, Declan Rice. Uh, listen, with Declan Rice, didn't see enough of him in, in, in his tournament, like uh, in his pre-season tour. I, I was at a charity football game yesterday in, in Loughton, which is like West Ham area and all that, and speaking to a few West Ham fans, and they're they're they're, they're absolutely. You know, oh, you you've got a player there. You 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 want to see what you do. You know that they were so, still, even though he's gone to Arsenal, still very very highly praising him and everything like that. I, I've got no doubt of, of his ability. I, I, it, for me, it's just interesting where we're going to play him. You know that that's the thing. Like you know, after watching Thomas Partey, no one controls a game better than Thomas Partey at Arsenal. He he done it in the uh, All Stars game in the first game for the first. Was it the All Star? I can't think what game it was. At. Nuremberg. Nuremberg. He just totally dominated the game, and then he came off, and we wasn't the same. And you know, we played Barcelona, and the control of the game that we had when he was in the base of it is is something that I don't think we we take for granted as fans. It's, it's such a difficult job to do, but he makes it look easy. So I think that's going to be the one for for for, for Declan Rice. I just want to see where he's going to play. This is why these next two games for me are very, very uh, important to see where we're going to be playing him. Because I'm with you, James, as you just said, to leave both leave one of them out, I, I don't think we're that good enough to do that at this moment. So there's no one good enough to in there that to, to justify that decision. So I think that's where they're going to have to get him get him playing. But um and, and as for Timber, as I said, uh, out of all three, you know, question marks on on the other two at this moment in time. Uh, but he's got a tick for me, a big green green and white tick. I, I, I was very, very impressed with him from, you know, played well against Man United for about 20, 25 minutes. Him and combined really, really well with Saka, which was, uh, which was great to see. And then on the game against Barcelona, it, you know, could it be a little bit of a coincidence that... that Habert played really well in that game because Timber was behind him. I don't know. You know, I mean, I just thought he was very, very impressive in that game as well. Um, the left-hand side, by the way, in the game against Barcelona was more devastating than the right, um, even though I thought Saka played really, really well. But it was Trossard playing, re- I think it was man of the match. Havert, as we said, played really well. Is that because Timber was there? Like, you know, so I like to think that it was. I, I was very, very impressed with him from... From the from the get go, when I first see him in the All Stars game to 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 the last game against Barcelona, out of everybody at this moment in time, forget transfer fees and and everything like that. If you're going to put him in order of first and second and third, you, you're putting him at the top. Yeah, yeah. One thing though about Timber, it's so funny that even though I learnt on this tour that Timber looks a class class act, really robust in, in the tackle, very good on the ball, very quick. Uh, I'm not. I don't think Ben White and Zinchenko are going to lose their places easily here. Um, yeah, yeah. Nor, nor will Sergio oh, Gabriel because he can play centre back as well. I still think Ben White is just class, class, class. Actually. Reminder, wasn't it? He played really well. well. Yeah, and, a little and reminder. Then, even though Timber did well against Barcelona, we won from left back, and he was really good. 
I thought against Man United, we, we realised how much we missed Zinchenko. And I think Zinchenko's a bit of a cheat code in that team. When he, when he is getting those little pockets and he's finding you know, those players in those 10 spaces, I'm not sure anyone in the team does it anywhere like him, or anywhere near him, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I, I really loved seeing Timber. But I think he's going to have to work really hard to get his spot in the team. Yeah. Um, and Rice, listen, isn't this a great problem if Rice is, like, fighting for his place in the Arsenal team? Like, I don't think he starts the season. Declan Rice? Yeah. First game, I don't think he starts maybe the first not. game. Maybe not, but I think that's great. But isn't this like what Man City have to deal with? It's like uh, you got, you've got to start Rice against Forest. I'm sorry, you got. To do I just, I, I've got no intel. Why do you have to? I've just got a feeling that, that should be an easy W, and Declan Rice should shine, and and that's the best platform you want to give the guy. He's not coming from a European country. He's coming for 105 million. He's English. He's mid twenties. I don't see no reason why he wouldn't start that first game. It's not Please. like. He hasn't had three, four weeks prep as well before he even signed for us. He was out in Portugal training. He's, he's ready to go. Yeah, but you, you so you've just answered that from the player perspective, though, which is which is right. I agree with you. If there's any opportunity to really get him in sync with this Xhaka role and playing with Part and all that, yeah, I agree. Given the minutes against Forest, but in terms of whether he has to play against that game from an art, sorry, against Forest from an Arsenal perspective, he doesn't have to because I, I would still be confident of winning with Havertz there. And if that's the combination that worked against Barcelona, and then let's say he goes that again against Monaco and it works really well, then there's going to be a temptation to stick with that. I think because the community shield's coming against Man City, I think there's a very good chance to see Partey and Rice together. Um, yeah. Because I think that's the kind of opposition you want to do that against. And if it works, is he really going to change that for Forrest? So that's maybe where I think Rice does get so, to play. Sorry, Turkish. I know we've got, we've got much more to get through. I've just thought of something. Um, I'm always doing this, but I've missed you guys. Can you just all three of you quickly? Everybody's fit. Everyone in the squad is fit. Who's your strongest 11? Let's do it quickly. Everyone's fit. Who's your strongest 11? Don't, don't give me the whole, depends on semi final, final, we're playing. Just give me your strongest 11. Go all on, right. Oh, go on, go on, go on. Leave, uh, no, no, no. You go, you go, James. You go. Okay, right. Ramsdale. Yeah. White, Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko. White, Saliba, Gabriel. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Last season's back four. Uh, Erdegaard, Partey, Rice. Yeah. Saka, Jesus, Martinelli. Lee. Last year's team, Rice and Fajaka. Exactly the same as James. Turkish? The same. I'm, I'm tempted to say Timber or Zinchenko, but... Oh, mine's quite different. Go on. Well, it's the, it's, it's the back four. My back four is a lot different. My strongest back four is Timber... Ben White, Saliba, Tierney. That's my back four. Yeah. I like. I, I think Ben White is, is 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 such a good centre back as well, and I think we've got a right back. So put the right back at right back, and I would take out Gabriel and Zinchenko. Zinchenko, I I, I just like Tierney as a left back. But anyway, I just want to hear your strongest. That back, that back four could happen because you could have Timber and Vert, and then and yeah. then White and Gabriel would be in the. Sorry, White and Saliba would be in the positions they normally be, and Tierney can do the left back thing the way White did it at right back. That, that could work. Anyway, Kibia played a few games out there, like, don't, don't, I like him. Oh, I like him as well. I like him. He, he, he I like he's, him yeah. he's done very, very well um, when he's come in towards the latter part of the season, got better and better as well. So, good well. options to have, isn't it? <clears throat> All of a sudden, we've got strength in depth. Lovely, isn't it? Oh, we're going to win the That's league. Time. It's about time. Um, all right, pre-season tour out the way. Thoughts on performances, new signings out the way. Next up, all right, next up. Oh, just before we go, let's just, just before we leave the pre-season tour, like, you know, uh, two, two things. I um, won't be um, uh, digging out the tactical insight show anymore. Like, you know, um, I'm, I'm trying to get on it. Like, you know, it's, it's the number one show out there, guys and girls. I've uh, yeah, learned my lesson. Um, do you want to explain why? Well, why? two reasons. I, you know, I got picked oh, two on. Two reasons. Two reasons got picked on by a lot of people um, out there, like that. Um, you know, leave the tactical insight show alone. It's the best thing going. And, and one of the reasons was it's like when when we was out there, we met people called the newbies, who are uh, fans that have only just started following the Arsenal over a year, maybe or two or three years. 
and uh, they're learning the game. And uh, I was told on by a few of them that, uh, to, that one of their things of learning because they're new to the game was the Tactical Insight Show. Um, and we're not all blessed with the knowledge that I've got, you know what I mean? So, uh, so fair play to it. So, uh, and, and people coming up to me and saying how popular James was and all. Oh. And, and of course, then, you know, Mr. Edu, like, you know, uh, said that he's a big follower of and watcher of uh, the tactical show. And um, I should leave James alone um, and stop, stop it there. So that's it. I, I, I so have my, um, I'll have to pick on someone else now. Like, unless someone <laughs> Maybe I'll just start going to the man that's on Talk Sport. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh... Lee, join the queue, mate. Join the queue. <laughs> no, but I'll like, pick up James. A lot, a lot of well, support thank you, Lee. for the tactical insight. Uh, and I like to think that maybe I've highlighted it a little bit along the way. Yeah. Right? You're saying you're marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. That's one way to look at it. That's he's he said he's, he's your PR. That's what he's been doing. He's, yeah, yeah, right. Really. So there was a, there was a, you know, madness to my motive or my, whatever the word is. Like, you know, so. Well, thank you this so much. I appreciate, it. and thank you to everyone who bullied Lee into that. <laughs> apology. Thank you to everyone who took part in that. I've never written so many checks. So thank you, yeah. <laughs> uh, people. And you did record a tactical, didn't you? It's out now. It's out on AFTV, yeah. Oh, there, you go. there you go, people. If you haven't watched it after this... Well, listen, I, I am going to go and watch it because of the lack of sleep that I've had. Like, I, <laughs> I am going to make sure that I'm awake now and watching this. I, I'm One minute. I'm on a plane. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that ceasefire lasted about 30 No, no, no. I'm good, so not, I'm, I am very tired. It's going to wake me up. It's going to inspire me because um, I've... Uh, I was the only one on the plane that didn't get a seat, you know what I mean? Like coming back. <laughs> plane, so, um, can I just say, can I just say, Jay, now you've got like significantly more followers and viewers of your show. Can you plug Forever Arsenal on your show so we can get some of those followers to come and watch this show? Is that, is yeah, that no all right? Worries. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank no you. worries. I'll happily promote anything for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know okay. about that, man. You're going to have bare people in the chat asking for fucking. Quantitative methods and all systems that. and all that. Stuff. Stuff. <laughs> Arsenal. This is not fucking tactical insight, people. Right? So if you do come over from tactical insight, love and just you know, just, just on that. just on that quick Turkish, I saw this tweet that I have to read to you because I know we're about to talk about Ramsdale and and the Raya stuff. So D at Highbury AFC says maybe Arteta's thinking of playing Raya and Ramsdale together as inverted keepers. <laughs> two inverted keepers, two inverted fullbacks, invert everyone, in my opinion, the invertibles. So, <laughs> the invertibles. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> it's not called Twitter no more, James. You have to get with the time. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah come on. I, I, woke up yesterday, well, I woke up yesterday afternoon because I don't sleep in the mornings now. Like, uh, with this new uh, thing... With an X, what's all that about? <coughs> X I think that means, you know what I mean? Because it it's, uh, it's not the, the nicest of platforms, is it? I tell you what, it's going to get some of us into trouble, isn't it? You're at home and you're complaining, you know, I'm complaining to my girlfriend that I'm having trouble with X. She'll be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> not that X. <laughs> yeah, I swear. Uh, you are right, though, Jade. We are going to move on to David Rea. Um, Brentford keeper, one year left on his contract, linked to Man United at the start of the window. They've signed a Nana. But it is a keeper that apparently was our plan A before we signed Ramsdale. And we couldn't agree a fee or or come to an agreement on, you know, a value that um, would have worked back then. But now with a year left, a £40 million asking price from Brentford might come down because I'm not sure they'd want to see him leave on a free in a year. And it's a goalkeeper that I rate highly. Um, I actually think he's better than Ramsdale, if I'm honest with you. I like Ramsdale a hell of a lot, but I do think Ray is better than Ramsdale. Um, can he make the step up into, into a bigger club, you know, fighting in the Champions League and all that? I think he deserves a chance to. And with news that Turner potentially is en route to Nottingham Forest, when I really look at it, we could potentially get David Rea for 
net 20 mil, net 25 mil, which would be a great piece of business when you consider Ramsdale will have extra competition, will have two keepers that can play at the back with their feet. Yes, there's you know a debate whether Reyes' height is a problem, but when you look at um, crosses collected, he's up there, I think, in the top three, three keepers in the league in terms of crosses collected. So height doesn't seem to be a problem. Playing at the back doesn't seem to be a problem. Ramsdale just signed a contract about 74 days ago, I think it was now. Do you think this is the right move? Because a few people have said, why aren't we buying a striker? Why haven't we brought in another attacker? We're spending money on a position that's fairly strong. But Ramsdale did come up with a couple hiccups last season and he has had a hiccup in pre-season as well with that Man United game, the first goal that he should have really kept out. Is this the ruthlessness that we've all, well, I say we've all, I've wanted to see after all these years? I think there is a bit of that in there. I don't think Ramsdale's days are numbered because Ramsdale, in my opinion, has been a revelation for Arsenal since coming in. I don't think people should turn now and start criticising Ramsdale and picking at um, bits and bobs to, to you know, um, big up a potential David Rea coming in. But Ramsdale has been a top keeper for us. He has helped turn shit around in the last few years. But it's also good to provide competition for every position, not just this position. So, yeah, thoughts and feelings. Lee, let's start with you on this one. Uh, yeah, look, for me, um, surprised. Going to have to say when I see it yesterday, very, very surprised. Actually, when it come out, I thought, oh, that's a load of old rubbish. That ain't going to happen and all that. But yeah, the more I think about it, the more I like it. Because I'll tell you why, you know, I'm not convinced with, with Turner in goal. I'm not being convinced. And, and to me, it, it looks like... Um, Arteta is as well not, not that convinced. If anything happened to Ramsdale, we would be in a a lot of trouble. So I, I think that we do need another goalkeeper, especially when you've got Champions League for and how he deals with that is gonna be that's gonna be the question for me, like you know. But at this moment in time, I've seen a little bit people starting to have a little go at Aaron Ramsdale now. He made a mistake against Man United, you know. I didn't, uh, didn't think he played that well against Man United and all that. Like I think he's a character that maybe needs that bit of competition, someone to come in. And if he does, who, who does it benefit? It benefits us as a football club. You know what I mean? That one, we're going to get Aaron Ramsdale on, on his game. Look, listen, Ramsdale knows if he does a make, makes a mistake and everything at the moment, has a couple of lackluster performances, he's still guaranteed, isn't it? you got someone like that coming in. It's not. And when you think about it, every other position... In the in the team has got competition. If you look bar, at the right, bar, the left Saka. bar Saka, Bar Saka, maybe maybe mm. Saka as well. Like you know, what I mean, are the only two. The only but two. You're right. You're right. You're so right. I, 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 the more I think about it, the more more I like it. Is Ramsdale going to come under pressure? In a, yes, in a good way. I also think at the end of it, it will make him a better goalkeeper. And at this moment in time, what I would say to Aaron Ramsdale, if I was manager, you're the number one. You've got you've got possession of the shirt. Don't lose possession of it. And the way to not lose possession is to, to to play really, really well. And there are lots of good games now that you can rotate a little bit, like, you know, and say, like, OK, you know, um, you know, they do a lot more kicking and all that than they did years ago and all that, like, you know. So you can have a rest, you know, in, in a Champions League game. And I, 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 that's the thing for me. It's going to be fascinating to see if it does happen now that Eric Man Eric. Eric manages it. I do agree with Turkish as well. When you look at it, when they're going our 40 million, I think at the end of the day, offset that with probably what they're going to get for going to get probably seven, eight, nine million for Turner. I don't know how much he's worth, but also I think it's a good thing. You know, well, if they're prepared to spend 40 million on another goalkeeper, if the right striker or if the, the, the right, right player comes up for top man, they're going to come and, they're going to come and go for, go go for it. Listen, I spoke to Edu. You know what I mean. He, he said, "Look, you know, friends, um, friend, we're very, very good friends. You know what I mean. Like, uh, actually, you know, said look, it's easier to sign players now than it was a couple of years ago. So, you know, this is what I'm saying. Players <coughs> want to come to Arsenal, and let's be honest. If 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 Rad does decide to come to Arsenal, what what a coup that is for Arsenal football mm. club." Way for you know, hold on a minute. I'm not guaranteed of being the, the number one here, but I want to come and play for Arsenal. I think it's a met, it ticks, ticks all the boxes for me. And you know, at this moment in time, I, I would say that if he does come, Aaron's number one, 
and 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 Ray is going to have to work his way into the team. But I tell you what, a couple of years ago, weren't that the same? We were talking with with uh, Ramsey and, and uh, yeah. So for me, I, I think it's it's what we need. I think we need two bloody good goalkeepers. I, I really do like. You know what I mean? And that's that's how I feel about it. Um, can I go in next? I've got, I've got quite a few yeah. things I want to rattle through on this one as well. I, I'm really interested in this one. First of all, I'm happy with this. I, when I saw the links, I wasn't. Oh, I was. I was like, okay, I'm, I, I like this. Second, I, I rate Rare as well. I rate him highly. Interesting that you were saying you think he's better than Ramsdale. I think his ceiling is higher than Ramsdale. I think I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if in three years' time, David Rare was top five in the world. I'm not so sure if Ramsdale has that ceiling in him. Although I do, and that's not to say I don't rate Ramsdale highly, because he was in my top three players last year of the year. At Arsenal, I'm talking about him, Saka and Odegaard, my top three players. So I think Ramsdale is a is a brilliant goalkeeper. Um, I do like the idea of having two, I'm going to contradict, contradict myself here slightly, but I like the idea of having two top goalkeepers. But equally, I don't like the idea of rotating. I don't believe you should have a cup goalkeeper and a league goalkeeper. So if, as Lee was alluding to, if Arteta can basically find a way to have two top goalkeepers and keep them pushing each other, and then when one has a bad run of form or is injured, you know you've got a keeper that can come in. The reason why I like this this possible this possible deal in transfer Turkey is just because if Ramsey gets injured for four or five months, our title charge is done. It's done. Yeah. It's actually done. Top Whereas, four's done. Sorry? Top four's done as well. It could be. It could be. So why would you not want to cover yourself everywhere possible? The chance of keepers getting injured for four or five months is very, very, very slim. Very this, more, slim. this does feel like more than just cover, though. When you when you look at the price and you look at how many how many clubs in, in our entire lives have had two top keepers at once? Well, well, look at the team we're going up against, guys. We're up against Manchester City. Yeah, but Ortega. Even, their, even their backup keeper's not the... No, like, he's good. He's, he's good. But over the years, they've had Claudio Bravo. They've had... Who was the other guy? What was the other guy's name? He was around Oh, the um, uh, I know what you mean. He's been around the block as well, so... It's the guy not went, went to Chelsea, didn't he? The guy went to Chelsea. Not, and Ortega is not a forty million pound signing either. No, but if I, but if Edison, right at one stage, didn't I? But if, but if, <laughs> but, if Edison, but if Edison was out for three or four months, they're not panicking. So I think if you can have two top goalkeepers, I think that's a good thing. Lee mentions makes a point about liking the idea of having a keeper that likes the challenge of coming to the Arsenal, knowing he's not number one. I get that, but you could flip that and say mentality wise do I, what do you want a goalkeeper that kind of knows his second choice i'm not i'm not sure that's a good thing either i want a goalkeeper that basically isn't happy to sit on the bench and wait i want a goalkeeper that's like no i want to go and play so you can flip that for me either way but one final point i want to make here is that i've got a feeling that i've just been told whoever you want within reason you can have because the amount of spending he's done over the last four or five transfer windows and to, to, to spend 30, 40 million on a backup goalkeeper, that for me, it, it, it feels like he's been told with you can't get Mbappe <laughs> within reason. You can cut, let us know who you want and we'll try and make it happen. And it wouldn't surprise me if we do get a striker in as well come the end of the season. So come the end of the window, sorry. So I'm, I'm for it, but I, I'm not really for the the cup goalkeeper thing don't rotate your goalkeepers but I like the idea of having a really good number two goalkeeper for sure <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean for Arsenal I love the idea of Ramsdale and Raya battling it out and having both to pick from that's great you know you, see, you seem a bit upset no, no, I, I think it's, you know, I, I think it's great. Do I want to drive to work in my Ferrari or my Lamborghini? Like, you know, whatever, like, great. The more the merrier, the better. But, but the one thing I'd say is that I think you can maintain that for maybe a year. And then there's big decisions to be made next year. Do you sell the guy who you signed for 30 million, who was seen as kind of the future goalkeeper, who... um is really loved by the fans who you gave a new deal to just a couple of weeks ago, or do you stick with your most recent and actually more expensive signing, which is David Raya? I don't think he'll be more than 12 months before 
or even 10 months before these conversations start, which is, listen, so which is it? Um, I saw a link today to, I think it was Robert Sanchez. Is it Robert or Roberto? Uh, no, Brighton. The, the Brighton. 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 See what I, I always rated him when he was playing and then he lost his place. I'm not really <clears> sure why. Um, see, that would make sense to me because I think he'd be cheaper, but also I think he's more naturally a two, but would it surprise me if he got good enough that he could play as our number one? That wouldn't surprise me. Actually, with, with Raya, it's like he's definitely a number one. Um, it was at that level anyway. I don't know. Is Arteta so ruthless that he's gone, yeah, you're good at playing out the back. You're good at doing all these things, but I want the best. And he's going for a David Raya. Then maybe, maybe he's that ruthless, but I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. What do you think? Tesh, I, 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 I want to ask you three a question because of what you just said there. Forget, forget. I think we all agree that Ramsdale will keep his space for the first game of the season or when, whenever Raya arrives, if he does arrive. But Jane made a good point there. The price tag. I've mentioned the price tag. If Raya is to come in for 30 to 40 million, a quick, quick one name from all of you. Who becomes our long-term keeper in your eyes from Arteta's perspective? Because like James said, we're spending more on this potential keeper coming in than we did on Ramsdale a couple of years ago. Apparently, this was our first choice. It's a it's a, it's a goalkeeper that's that's you know, well sought after. I mean, Man United were interested. Bayern Munich have shown interest. So who, in your opinion, if we do go spend 30, 40 M's on, on David Rea, will be our keeper at the start of the 24-25 season? Rea. Who's brave enough? Rea, you want to join me, yeah? Mm -hmm. Lee? I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with Ramsdale. I, 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 you know, he's 30 million pounds. At the end of the day, oh, I, I, it, it's just Why difficult. Would you it? Yeah, you know, but inflation and all that, like you know, I mean, how much would Ramsdale be worth now? Like, Ten million you know? in a year. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. I, listen, I, I think there's been a long-standing admiration from for Raya and there from Arteta. Sometimes you have to, you, you know, be if, ruthless, if, I suppose. If, you know if, what I mean? Like David Seaman, John Lukic sort of scenario. Yes, it yes, day, yes. like you know. Um, Oh. I've been with Lukic, but David Seaman was better. So there's a, there's a Spanish side of things as well. Apparently, our goalkeeper coach has coached Raya before. Yes, yeah. yes. If, 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 if Raya comes in, he's the our long-term number one. The one thing that baffles me about this, if this is the case, and why why sign Ramsdale on a long-term contract and big more big money when this was going to happen? Well, you've got to protect his value anyway. You, you could probably get 50 million for Ramsdale now. Yeah. So, I, I mean, then he's a bit, he's a dearer goalkeeper than I, think, I think in a year you can make profit on either. That's that. That's the thing. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, I agree with you, Turkish. Uh, uh, to answer your question, I, 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 I do I edge, I'm like 51 49 towards Raya just because I'd be thinking, why have you spent 40 million on mm. the whole coach thing? Um, his stats from last season are apparently impeccable. Like he ranked first for almost everything, which is mad. Um, you know who I liken it to with Ramsdale? And I'm a huge Ramsdale fan, but I thought he was brilliant mm -hmm. last season. I really did. I liken it a little bit to Kieran Tierney. Like, I don't think any of us ever looked at Kieran Tierney as like the problem in the 11. Yeah, and he's but not then you him. saw what Zinchenko did from that role yeah, yeah. and how yeah. he contributed to build up, and they all went. Oh, we love you, Tierney, but we kind of get it. And I, I wonder whether it'd be that. Some but, of the... but, but I don't want Ramsdale to suddenly... Be... I've, I've heard a lot of, well, Ramsdale's not a modern goalkeeper and Raya is. It's James but... Tain, it's nonsense. The last 24 hours, I've heard so much nonsense from our And a lot of it from Arsenal fans on the radio, on the forums. Oh, he, he made mistakes last season. I'm like, what? He made, I can think of three mistakes all season that Ramsdale made. Three. I don't know if you guys can. The Ryan will make mistakes. Oh, They're all away, Tottenham away, Liverpool away. I just think to myself those... the disrespect on Ramsdale's name is so harsh. Yeah. Look at that performance against Liverpool. You yeah. know, he kept us in that game with some. Um, but Tottenham as New, well. Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah. It's the Newcastle, Newcastle game. Yeah. The Newcastle the game's the one. He, he he was brewing all those, and his distribution is very good. Like let's not let's not confuse a bad moment. Let's be honest, distribution hasn't been great. Great. For a while, I'm talking end of last season to pre-season now, but he's largely very good on the ball. Um, so yeah. if Raya's better and that's just what it is, then fine. I can't begrudge Arteta wanting to bring 
better to the club. But I, I don't see Ramsdale as a problem or a, a, or someone oh. who we need to... You're, you're <laughs> right with the Zinchenko comparison because if you do look at it statistically, and yeah. uh, trust me, I'm a believer of the eye test matters as much as st- statistics matters. He's, he, he's, he's a great a shot stopper. Brentford do take a hell of a lot more shots upon goal than Arsenal do, and he's got a better percentage there. His short passing percentage is, is considerably higher than Ramsdale's, and we are impressed with Ramsdale's passing, both short and long. His long passing accuracy is, is, is considerably better as well. So it, it probably is that Tierney's well, in general feel. Yeah. No, the, the one thing I was like, if he's, if he's going to be ruthless like this, that's fair enough. I'm, I'm happy. To, then you've got to be ruthless up front as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, like Jesus is love him and all that. There, there's, there's, there's things that are wrong. So if you're going to be ruthless with a goalkeeper, then I want it's, you to be ruthless. But Lee, Lee, Lee it's, it's, easy, it's easy to say that though, because. It's, it's, it's easier clearly to upgrade on your goalkeeper than it is on your striker. If, if you can get Rams of a four, sorry, Raya for 40 million, that's easier than getting an upgrade on Jesus for the for the equivalent price. If you get I, get, I, mean, I get what you're saying. Like, to, up, to upgrade on Jesus, just spending 100 mil. Yeah. That's a massive gap to what Jesus is. Whereas he's obviously thought, I can upgrade my goalkeeper. And the fee isn't that much of a difference. But I think I look at the stats yeah. between his kicking to Ivan Tony. Apparently, Ivan Tony won like so many balls in the air last year due to Rare's kicking. And I wonder, again, I'm doing James's favourite phrase, the mental gymnastics here, thinking, I wonder if the tactics are going to change. Here's a bit of insight for your show here, James. If he's thinking to go long more, and that's where Havertz comes into play. I'm just thinking if, if maybe the kicking of Raya, I agree, Ramsdale's kicking is brilliant. He's of Edison, but it's brilliant. Mm. But I think Raya's kicking is actually even better. And I wonder if he thinks, if I can get that percentage, that 5% more accuracy from my kicker from the goalkeeping position to Havertz or it is maybe Jesus, it's worth it. But isn't this chicken and egg as well? Is 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 Raya's kicking really good or is kick, kicking percentages really good because... Ivan Tony wins true, everything. True, true. Or is true, Ivan Tony true, winning true. everything because Raya is true, putting true. it right where he wants it? That's a fair it. point. That's a fair no, point. but it's fascinating. I, I, I love this kind of stuff. I find it really interesting. All right. and we'll, we'll, we'll see. Because the, the goal against Barcelona, the Trossard one, is Ramsdale's kick to Jesus. You didn't ask Turkey. What, what did you think? What was to ask your, your own question? Oh, oh, Raya. I mean, I did said that. I think, I think he's the best. You, statistically, you look at it, um, that there, there's an improvement there. Um, but I do like Ramsdale, and it is, it does feel harsh. But at the same time, this is coming from a fan that's wanted us to be so ruthless over the years. So I'm with Lee. If you're this ruthless there, you need to be this ruthless everywhere. And there's other positions that need you know, attention in that department. And also, think of to the rest of the league what this looks like. This looks like yeah. Arsenal are tooling up. Serious. It sends out a message to the rest of the league and rest of Europe that Arsenal are tooling up. And as we said earlier, when Lee mentioned. If we were to get Raya in, the only position I can think of where we don't have adequate cover is for Saka. That then becomes the only position for me where if Saka's out, the drop-off is quite significant. Reece Nelson is, is good, yeah. but he, he's not Saka. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, anyway. He's not even a right winger, really. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. This is one that I want to get people's thoughts on in the comments section as well. So, you know, we're heavily linked to Raya, Ramsdale. A lot of us have loved him over the last couple of years. What's your opinions on it? Does he take the number one spot straight away? Is he going to be the long-term number one? Or is this competition for Ramsdale to improve? Like I said, we can probably make a profit on both come next summer anyway. So it's a good problem to have. We've already passed 60 minutes, people. So I already hope that we've passed 1,000 likes. We haven't talked in a little while. It's been a couple of weeks and the DC special was only 20, 25 minutes long. So we've got one more topic to cover, then comment of the day. They'll be touching maybe 90 minute show. So make sure you show a hell of a lot of love. The like button, the comment section, do all of that. We're doing comments of the day today as well. Jordan. Sorry, Jordan, before, before, sorry, sorry, man. I know you hate that. We didn't have this with Curtis, did we? It's only a 20 minute joke with Curtis because there were no interruptions. 
We covered the same amount of ground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just went to it's like the ball being in out of play, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? It's Shut up. Shut up. Listen, I just wanted to say before we want to ask the Wenger, I do think it's been a few weeks. We can extend it a little bit. Cass yeah. is going to kill him behind yeah. the scenes, but um, I'll, I'll take it. I just thought it was very it's important to briefly have a quick chat about Partey staying because that for me is quite significant. I think I think when we did our last show, it was looking like he was going. I think we always resigned to him leaving. But I was doing a show on Toolsport the other day comparing midfields. Look at our midfield compared to our rivals' midfields. Our midfield options now are actually insane. Let's assume Partey does stay, stay proper stay now. Partey, Jorginho, Rice, um, uh, who else have we got? Bloody Havertz. Havertz. Havertz um, is one Smith, Rowe. Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe, Vieira. Vieira. Like us are. Trots are now, apparently. Whatever you want. Our mid- I look at Liverpool's midfield. I think theirs is quite strong, but it's brand new. United's midfield is strong, but I think ours is better. Man City's midfield is better than ours, but not that much better than ours because they're now minus Gundogan and they're brought in Kovacic. So I just thought it was important to mention the fact that if you look at who we've got with, with Partey, the continuity there in that midfield, we look good in midfield, man. We look really, we look tooled up. We definitely look tooled up. So yeah. that was it. No, I agree. And by the way, I loved uh, Smith Rowe's cameo against Barcelona. He got the 45. Yeah. Um, and we know Smith Rowe can, he's a combination player and he's got like moments in the final third and all that. I love the, I, my favorite moment was he won the ball back from a counter. And then a couple of minutes later, he's turning on the edge of our area past the Barca midfielder. I'm thinking, that's great. That's the kind of composure and level of complete game we need to see. So. Yeah, Smith Rowe, I'm excited about him. Do, do you guys think some will go, though? Because if you look at our options, we can't have that many midfielders, plus Reese Nelson, plus um, Balogun, plus Inketia, plus Trossard. So we've got to lose a midfielder. Someone's got to be sold. I think we'll lose a forward. I think we'll lose Balogun. And I'm not convinced Eddie's definitely here for the full season, if I'm honest. But even if you didn't sell Balogun and or Eddie, you, you can't have four midfielders on your bench. Or can you? I think. I think. I think go on, Tosh. I, I think you're right. I think, but again, I don't know why we gave Elneny the extra year. At the time, mm. everyone said it was because he was injured and it was a goodwill gesture. But he's back fit, so I don't actually know why we gave this extra year. On one hand, we've shown ruthlessness with this goalkeeper situation, but with this Elneny one, who I'm, I'm actually a fan of Elneny. He's come in seven million, giving us seven million worth of performances. Thank you. Goodbye. So that extra body there is not necessary. Jorginho, in my opinion, if it's a choice out of party and Jorginho, sell Jorginho for 10 mil. You've basically recouped what you've got. But he's also got a bit of quality about him. So if you're looking at who to keep, it would be Rice, Partey, Jorginho as the free. But I don't, I don't know the plans. I'll be honest. I don't think... I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with midfield. But I will say my confidence drops quite a bit behind Partey, Rice and Odegaard. As much as you've mentioned we've got a hell of a lot of midfielders and when you compare them to other teams, Rice, Partey and Odegaard, for me, are it, me seeing them on the line and my confidence is there. Me seeing Vieira replace Odegaard, it comes down. Me seeing Jorginho replace um, Declan Rice, it goes down. Me seeing Havertz in there instead of Partey and Rice plays a six, it goes down. So as much as, yes, by name... But that's applicable anywhere, Turkish. So any, any club loses their any of their first three midfielders, apart from probably City. Yeah, yeah, the drop yeah. is the drop is probably not great. Look at United but midfield. But, but but that's but the three midfielders I've picked is actually what I don't think Mikel Arteta is going to play. I think okay. Mikel Arteta is going to play with Partey as the backup. I think he's going to play oh. Rice. Okay, okay. I, I want him to play Partey, but I don't know. Um, yeah, moving on. Awesome yeah. Wenger statue. It's been unveiled, or has it been unveiled? It's, it's been it's been set up. I don't know if there's an unveiling process going to happen. Um, I think he's a special guest at our first game of the season, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe the some... Monaco Emirates Cup. I think he might Emirates be. Cup. That's it. Yeah. So maybe maybe there'll be an unveiling then. But it is there. It's at the Emirates. So if you're in and around the area, you can go and visit the brand new awesome Wenger statue holding up the Premier League trophy. Um, well deserved something I probably wouldn't have said three years ago that's for sure mm. but I think where Arsenal are at now I think I said this last show where we're at now I feel like we've completely moved on from that era now 
and I say completely, it's just round the corner. It's only a few years ago we were deep in the mud. But, I mean, what Arteta's given us, what this young team has given us is a fresh outlook. I'm looking more into the future than I am the past. So, with this statue, I think it is quite good timing. He deserves it for sure, probably deserves more. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy that it's there. I see on Twitter a lot of people are criticising fans that were Wenger out and had enough of him, including myself, and now going to visit the statue and take pictures with the statue. That's nonsense to me because I feel like 70, 80, maybe even more of the fan base wanted Wenger gone in some way, shape or form. It became very stale. A lot of people wouldn't say those words because of respect, but it did get very stale and we did drop off a hell of a lot. But I just feel like you can have that opinion like I did, but you can still love the man because I love Wenger. I mean, I can separate the, the good from the bad quite easily. He gave me my best moments as an Arsenal fan. At the same time, there was also some very bad moments as an Arsenal fan that he gave. But it's better to forget those, appreciate what he did do for us now. It's a new era under Mikel and under what seems like an ownership that have have renewed their approach, to say the least. So, big up Benga, trophy unveiled, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Turkish. I think time's a good healer. Uh, I, I, I do feel maybe not that uh, healed for everybody. Um, listen, people have been more vocal about Wenger in and out because of their social um, media platforms. But, you know, people that have not got that sort of um, social media impact have been criticising him in pubs and, and, and you know, uh, and whatever. I've seen people fighting in the stands over it, you know, not agreeing with certain things, Wenger in and Wenger outs, having fights and things like that. You know what I mean? I remember coming out of uh, the, the League Cup final when we lost to Birmingham, getting abuse from, from myself when, when people were saying, like, you know, he's got to go and all that. I said, oh, you know, I was sticking up for him at that moment in time. I, I My um, allegiance to Wenger went in 2015 when we just signed Petr Cech, if I'll be honest. That's when I lost my faith in him as a manager. Uh, I, I understand that people, you know, didn't or c you can criticise, but he was getting a lot of abuse, which was wrong. I never abused him, but I certainly criticised him. Um, and, and then you've got people now saying, "Oh, it's out of order." Go and oh, well, then, then there's going to be an, uh, not not a very big line of people queuing up for for photos of him. Then, if that's how everybody feels, because I remember it was if. 20% when it was in a minority, you know what I mean, of finger out and people would be very aggressive towards it. In the end, it was completely the other way around. It was probably 80-20 that wanted him to go. What is what has gone on has gone on. Let it be, you know what I mean? Let, let sleeping dogs lie. You know, I, I think he'd done a fantastic job for Arsenal for, for more than 10 years. People go on about 10 years. I think he'd done a fantastic job to get us in the Emirates era and, and get us into top four for so many years as well. I think that, that was magnificent, but towards the end, you know, it gone, but uh, this is, again, it's, uh, you know, I don't want the Arsene Wenger statue now to be used as a, as a, an, a, a tool to argue about and things divide. like that. A pun? You don't want it to be used as a, as another divider. Yeah. As another divider. If you want to go and have your picture taken with you criticising him or not, you know, you should be able to do that. That's what it's there for. Um, you know, and, and I've spoken to a couple of put, put my, a couple of my mates, by the way, that have um, been very much finger out, and they won't go. You know, they, that's their their prerogative. You know, what I mean, they've, they've said, you know, it's not something that they can forgive and whatever. Uh, but I don't want it. Don't want it to be like, oh, look at him, he's having a photo done, or he's having a photo done, or whatever. Like, you know, uh, listen, you know, if you look at it back when that last game of the season that when they were. A lot of fans stayed there and clapped him that day that been wanting him out. Let's be honest about that, right, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I do think it's going to cause a little bit of a problem at first with, in, with the Arsenal fan base. And listen, we've got a fantastic fan base that's really united at the moment. We don't want to be having little fracas and all that. And I do think it's still a little bit ginger, a little bit like uh, fragile, our, our fan base. I really do, you know what I mean? Um, so for me, why can't people just let people, if people want to have a photo done with it, whether they criticised him or wanted him in there or not, why have you got to comment about it? Why have you got to be nasty about it? I've seen things on there like people going hypocrites, 
You know what I mean? Hypocrites if you if you do that. And and it's the same people I've I've, I've stood in the stands with here and shouting out Wenger out. You know what I mean? I just don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's not. Uh, I'm, I I still feel very very um, funny about the Arsene Wenger thing. Right? I feel um, bad that I did criticise him. I'm not going to lie. You know what I mean? But I I felt it was justified at the time. I really did. I really do. You know. Um, I think it could have been stopped by him and by the by the club a lot, lot earlier than what it was. Um, and l- listen, you know the statues up. You know, I, I, I will go and have a look at it, like you know what I mean, because I, I rather look at the ten years or the twelve, thirteen years that in his first time when he did give us the best times of our lives. You know what I mean? And I think that that's got you know uh, gets sort of forgotten about a little bit, like you know. So I, I, I'm I, I'm a. Uh, 50-50 on this, guys. You know what I mean? I really am. You know what I mean? I see why... Uh, I, I, I see all the good things about it, but I do see that it's going to cause a bit of trouble. Yeah. Jordan, is that a smirk you're hiding or...? No, 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 no. Um, again, I'll, I'll be, I will be brief on this one. I mean, I'm, I'm not on the fence at all. I think the man deserves a statue. I think the man brought us some of our best ever moments in years. I think the guy deserves to be honoured for what he did. Um, I'll be very honest and open. I thought he stayed five seasons longer than he should have. Um, it was the Reading game. I keep saying this before, but that cup game against Reading, that was the night where for the first time I was like, yeah, he's got to go. And I think that was 2012. Um, so maybe it was more than five years, but I think he stayed much longer than he should have. I wanted him out years, years before he left. Um, I do think his legacy was slightly tarnished by the end. But he was there for 20 plus years and you have to factor everything in. Um, and, and that's why for me, he is an Arsenal legend. Debatable whether he's a Premier League legend or not, but that's another discussion for another for another day. But no, he's invinci- a Invincible, you're a Premier League legend. Uh, no, no, no. Arsenal is a Premier League legend. Though, if, you, if you encompass his entire 20 plus years, it's a debate for me. It's a debate. There's a lot of sixes and sevens and fives and fours in there. I, I agree with um, that. And that's not acceptable for doesn't Jose, Pep, Klopp, Sir Alex. They've not got as many batterings and beatings as, as Wenger does. I think that goes against him. They've all got European Cups. I know that it's Europe, but it's the premier competition in club football. He's never won it. Um, he's never won any European trophy of any form. That goes against him. But I think the brand of football goes for him. The introduction of Thierry Henry goes for him. Three Premier League titles goes for him. The stadium and getting top four despite having purse strings um, uh, tightened, that goes for him. So it's, it's a debate for me. But anyway, this is an Arsenal chat about the, the statue of the Emirates. He's an Arsenal legend. That that, that was that, that was secured years ago for me. So if you want to have a photo with it, have a photo with it. I might have a photo with it as well. But I don't begrudge people that wanted him out wanting a photo, wanted to embrace that moment because it's like your dad. Your dad's not perfect, but you love your dad because he's your dad. Wenger was our manager for a long time and brought us some great years. So therefore, there's a respect for him that will always be there. But I won't forget some of the times when I do hold him culpable for some of our lowest moments too. Yeah, 100%. James, you've been quiet. Do you want to offer an opinion or...? Yeah, I love Wenger and I never saw the great days. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I never saw him. So um, a lot of the, a lot of the, I don't know, a lot of the fans that didn't see those great days tend to hold on to more class, tradition, um, respect these kind of values more than anything. And Wenger never, he never really lost any of those values towards until he said that we pay the highest ticket prices because of the football and show. That's when I thought this ain't you talking, but I get I get what you're saying. You, the younger generation love Wenger even without the great days. Yeah, it's just I I just um, I don't really have much more to add to what you've all said. Um, deserves a statue, legend of the club. I I do think he's a Premier League legend, just because if you if you use the word legend a different way, almost like a like the legend of something, like you know, like something you know, you know, you hear of things, mythical things are taught. Like, like his 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 wars with Fergie, Fergie were legend, weren't they? It was like, you know. So, um, 
Yeah. I'm, I want to be clear happy. though. Sorry, James. I'm not saying that he's not a Premier League legend. I'm saying for me, it's oh, a debate. Yeah, it's, it, a debate. It, it's a it's a debate. I probably will lean on it him being one, but it's not like an obvious for me. But sorry, yeah. James. The comments he, he, have started ripping you already. I know you, you needed to be quicker with that excuse. I'll be honest. They've already pressed enter and said what yeah. they need to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing is, I think really, you know, when when we was going through that, but emotion comes into it as well. You know, what I mean, the team's not doing well. We're 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 emotionally like, you know, it's attached to things. You know what I mean? Like, I look back on it, you, you think like, well, they were bad times, but you, you know, were they as worse? And they're not as worse as what you think they were. We never got relegated or anything like that, and blah 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 blah. So emotion comes into it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they were doing. You know, does anybody really look back with a bit of pride when they all went on the 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 the, the, um, the march? You know what I mean, like the Wenger out march and all that. Like, does any Arsenal fan really look back and think like, well, you know, you know I'm not, I'm not proud of those No, I'm not proud of it, Turkish. At the time, I, 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 I'll be honest, I went on it, um, and, and you know the Wenger process and that. But do I look back at it and say that I'm proud of it? No, I'm not. Just, 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 just for the record, Lee, I, I didn't go on as much as let all our viewers know. I didn't yeah. go on as much. Yeah, no, 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 no. You, you were too busy at the fucking parades that were going on everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you, you know, it would be if you, you turn up to a game every now and then, like, you know what I mean? That helped as well, like, you know what I mean? But no, I did. I did go on that and I, I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. But, you know, if, if you said to me now, would you go on I, The way I feel now, I wouldn't have gone on it. But at the time, I was emotionally attached to what was going on at Arsenal. And you do things that perhaps you... You shouldn't do when you're emotionally attached. I don't know. I'm trying to make excuses for myself. Tell, here. Tell me if I'm wrong. I don't regret it, but I'm not proud of it. That's how I stand on it. T tell me if I'm wrong, but I think a way to maybe sum up Wenger, and the, the reason why I you tell me if I'm wrong is because obviously, like I said, I wasn't there for a lot of it, but it felt, it feels like when he arrived, he reinvented a lot of things and was ahead of the game. Yeah. And we, we had so much success through it. And then maybe around his peak or in the years after his peak, there were just too many restraints to get the best out of him. But by the time the money kind of came back in, because let's not forget, I think it was 2014 he spent, no, 2013 he spent 42 million on Ozil and then 35 million on Sanchez the year after and then 35 million on Xhaka and then 35 on Mustafi in 2017 or 16. I can't remember which one. There was some money spent, let's be honest, 50 million on Lacazette and all that. And I just feel that at that point, the game had moved on. It was about immense intensity, a high press. Tick Attacker had died and it was about, you know, Guardiola kind of reinventing that as well. And maybe it just passed him a little bit. I, I think by then I was watching Arsenal going, we don't, we're not the hardest working team in the league or anywhere near it. We don't chase teams. We don't, there was a lot of parts of our identity that were lost. We weren't producing the youngsters we used to. So I think it's just when you he, we had him for so long, we had the best, we had the growth, we had the peak, and then things started to go downhill and, and maybe other factors and the timing of it accentuated certain problems. But, you know, like you said, Lee, it was the right time for him to go and probably sooner, but he's still in his worst years, lifted four F, three FA Cup trophies um, and three community shields. You want to chuck those in there. He got us to a Carabao Cup final, Europa League final. And I always felt that Arsenal were never that, that far away. But I think maybe in the aftermath, we realised actually how much change was really needed. And a lot of that landed on Emery's door and then Arteta's early on. But, we're be but we we've come through it and he is a legend. And Arteta embraces a lot of um, that history and embraces what he learnt from Wenger and embraces... Arson and his team and always talks about wanting him back and always talks about having the reminders around the training ground and all that. And that shows you that he shaped Arteta in a small way as well. So that's all very good. Yeah, that's definitely a positive. All right, I think we've covered every topic we mentioned we were going to cover, if I'm not mistaken. We are doing a double episode this week, people. Obviously, the Monaco game, Emirates Cup is this Wednesday. Then it's the Community Shield this Sunday. So we'll be back next episode Friday-ish. Saturday latest, Thursday earliest. So make sure you're subscribed, put the notification bell on. 
And this time it's James who's going to interrupt. Yes, I am. Is that the first prediction of the season, Community Shield? Well, is, is this you asking to see the prediction table? No, not one bit. No, not one not bit. One bit. Um, <laughs> but actually, is it the first prediction? Because I think that tells us how much we count it as a real competition. Not for, not for me, then. So you don't... Oh. See, I don't count as a real competition, but I think we should do it as part of our prediction league. You need, you need all the games you can get to I catch do. Up. I really do. I really do. I really do. I mean, predict hey, hey, well, we should have done the friendlies out in America then, shouldn't we? Like? <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. This is semi-serious. All right, prediction start next episode. Community show. Yeah? yeah? Done. Cool. On. The big it's one. Since we're on that note, now we've said this starting end of the week, we have to show them the current setup at the moment. Oh, jeez. <sighs> yeah, current that's great. setup at the moment. That's great. It's been fun. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Yeah, nice like one. Button. See you on Thursday. See Subscribe Thursday. to the channel. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. And uh, see you soon. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Uh, yeah. I mean, our audio listeners now, I don't know what's going on, but it's probably a good thing, actually. <laughs> no, they don't. And I don't oh, encourage you to go to the YouTube video either. So, yeah. Just, and a heads, just heads up, people. Up. With four days left for the first predictions of the 23 24 season, my bank account is still on zero. I'm struggling. <laughs> These men are not paying their debts. Still on <laughs> zero. <laughs> Put your bank in like that, really. and you never know. You might get it. You might get it with about an hour's delay or two hours, maybe even a day later than what when the show's meant to go out. Like, you know what I mean? like yeah. I'm going to pay you what that money was worth at the time of the predictions. So it might be a bit less than you want. There's been quite a lot of inflation in the last few months. All right, cool. Are we looking forward to those payments, What's lads? Thirty-two pound fifty, and it we got to pay on it. Thirty-two fifty, Jordan and um, Lee, and then it's fair. It's thirty-seven. No, thirty-seven. Thirty-five, isn't it? Thirty-two fifty twice is sixty-five, and then one hundred and five, isn't it? One hundred and ten. So it's forty-five. I'm paying 45 and these lot are paying 30. Bloody, I've got a meeting in five minutes, guys. Can we just work this out? Just... We'll work this out and have a time. I yes, thought it was in there, the shirt, isn't it? You're it's the same my problem to work out. 110 pounds <laughs> between you three. If you send it all from one account, even better. If you want to split it up, even better. This I can guy. I your needs. Don't worry about that. Oh, oh this guy. guy. Comments of the day. Have we got them ready or have you lot forgotten? I forgot. I haven't got I haven't one, got a comment today because it was from... Um... I suppose it would have been from the American one. So yeah, I've I got a comment for a day. There was probably a lot of that. Curtis is better than Jordan. There you go. There's my comment. <laughs> there was a lot of those. There was a lot of those. <laughs> there was a lot of them. I could tell with that now. Like, like, that's all I was saying. <laughs> oh, James, do you have one by any chance? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, Curtis is better than Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> that was... Bring back to from Can someone else. <laughs> There's another comment. They had 10,000 likes. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> there was another one. I tell you what, it was, it was great to bring an Arsenal fan on. Like, I mean, that was <laughs> another one. Like. He left. He's gone. <laughs> He's, He's left, left the building. <laughs> He's <laughs> left the building. Audio listeners, Jordan has gone running. He couldn't take the heat. He's got out of the kitchen. And I had a, I actually had a comment of the day ready as well. Oh, um, it. oh no. But it's what it is. My one actually yeah. says, Curtis is so much better than Jordan. <laughs> um, so that's that's the comments of the day wrapped up. Yeah. We appreciate that. that. <laughs> Jordan's actually yeah. left us. He's had enough. Yeah, All right. Talk sport must be calling. It is what it is. Yeah, um, yeah, no, yeah. 90 minutes right. show done. Hope you guys haven't missed us too much. Obviously, we was out in the US doing our thing. Hope you enjoyed the content. Hope you're subscribed. Hope the notification bell is on. Monaco Emirates Cup is coming up. We're going to be previewing that. Tactical Insight is out already. Invincible will be coming out this week. The season starts next week. So all the shows are coming back thick and fast, people. So make sure you're here. Make sure you're liking. Make sure you're loving. Love for the love. We're out, people. Peace.